And as we uh, begin this Advent season, we'll bless these uh, Advent candles and, um, and ask God to bless our Advent. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessing upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to you all. Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. And so the first week of this Advent season, uh, Jesus reminds us to be watchful, to always be watchful, keep on guard. And then also in that first reading, we kind of come with that question, um, why is there so much evil in the world? Why don't you just make us do your will? Because, you know, God... Maybe, maybe we've prayed this prayer many times. God, why don't you just make me do what you, want you, what you want me to do? And everything, boy, if everybody did that, if you just made everybody do your will, this world would be a, so much a better place. You know, just, just, just do this, you know. And, and, uh, but in God's wisdom, in God's wisdom, he doesn't make it that way. He doesn't make it that way. So the, the evil of this world is not because of God's fault. God created humanity perfect. There was no sin in humanity, in the humanity that God created. But it was because of a choice that Adam and Eve made, that Adam and Eve had made, and that we continue to make. So God gives us a choice because he loves us. Imagine being married to somebody who never had a choice to be married to you. That wouldn't be true love, would it? So he wants us to truly love and truly to respond and truly to make a decision. So it's based upon the decision that we make, the choices we make in our lives. And so that's why we have to be watchful. We have to be alert. We have to be always be alert of what's going on around us, and especially in the spiritual life. There isn't a day that we cannot be aware. We have to be vigilant at all times, 24-7, 24-7. And it's very important to understand that because, you know, if there's a time that we're not aware, that's when the devil's going to get you. 
You know, maybe you experience this. Maybe you're really good at driving and you're a pretty safe driver, but the one time you're not watchful, there's the policeman right there and they get you. Or maybe you're acting pretty good in the house, but that one time you're not paying attention, you do the wrong thing, mom's there and you get caught. Right? That's like the devil. He knows when you're watching and he knows when you're not watching. And he'll catch you. Right? So like for me, okay, I get up every morning during the week at 5.30. I get up at 5.30 because I know I got things to do. I got to get up. I got to pray. I got to pray for the community. I got to say celebrate Mass. There are things I got to do. So I'm, I'm vigilant, right? I'm like, hey, I'm getting up. I got to go. I got to do my adoration. I got to go to Mass, say Mass and all this stuff. No problem. Saturday morning is my sleep-in morning. That's when I get to get up at 6 o'clock, right? So I set my alarm at 6 o'clock, and what do I do? I hit the snooze button. Not once, not twice, three times, at least three times every Saturday, I hit the snooze button, and then I got to get going and running. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to running. I got to run late. Quick, take a shower, get out here, open up and everything else, and I'm running late. And then I don't have the time to pray my prayers well, right? I'm just rushing through my prayers, right? So the devil gets the best of me every Saturday morning because I'm not being vigilant. I'm not saying, you know, I got to get up at this time. I got to get up and get ready. My guard is down. And so that's when the devil gets us, when our guard is down. So that's why we always have to be vigilant because I can tell you one thing, the devil is not taking a vacation. He's not taking a vacation on you. So that means that we cannot take a vacation on Jesus. You know, a lot of people think, well, I need a vacation from Jesus. I need a siesta from Jesus. I need to have a little bit of less religion in my life because it's just too much. And for some of us, maybe it's just too much energy. You know, it's, it's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting to have to be vigilant all the time. But again, the devil's not taking a siesta on you. He's waiting for that time. Like, if you're vigilant, He's not going to attack you then because you got it. You got it covered with God's grace. But when you let your guards down, ah, boom, he gets you. And so that's why we need to keep guard 24-7. That's why we can't go out and say, oh, I'm going to have this party. I'm just going to, oh, I know, I know Jesus wouldn't want this for me, but I'll go there and, and but that's okay. I need a vacation. I, I can't take everything so seriously, right? And I'm like, no, because that's when he's going to get you. That's when he's going to get you to make the wrong decisions. And then the one wrong decision leads to another, to another, to another, to another. Like, ah, I don't have to go to Mass on Sunday. I'm not going to go to Mass. And then the next Sunday, well, maybe this one too. I just won't go to this one. And then the next one, right? And that's how people start to fall away from the faith. It could be just hanging around with the wrong person, the wrong crowd, and say, you know, I don't like this crowd, but ah, I'll just go. And then next thing you know, well, okay, I'll have, a, I'll have a beer too. Next time, I'll have six beers, no big deal. It's just a couple more. Eight beers, 12 beers in a night. Well, hey, here's some marijuana. I'll try that too the next time. Next time, it might be a little more marijuana. Next time, well, maybe I'll do some more drugs. Hey, that serious stuff, I don't know. Well, they're pushing me. Well, maybe. Well, I'll say no this time. I don't want to judge them, you know. And so it starts to be one decision after another. So that's why we have to be careful of our decisions that we make throughout our life. Because when we make our decision, it affects the next and the next and the next and the next. It goes on down the line. So that's why we always have to be vigilant. Now, when we're vigilant, we have to realize why we're vigilant. Because we want to get to heaven. Now, think about this. Okay, we want to take a siesta from Jesus. Just say we want to take a siesta from Jesus. Well, okay, if we, take Je if we, if we, if we do want to take a siesta from Jesus, then we're asking Jesus not to be there. Well, who is Jesus? Well, Jesus is God, which is why we don't want him to be there. The one thing that we've always been pounded into our brains as credo Catholics is that God is love. So if you don't want Jesus to be there, you're saying you don't want love to be there. You don't want his mercy to be there. You don't want his grace to be there. 
So if you distance yourself from Jesus in these acts, you're saying, I don't want you here, and then that's where the devil gets you. So we realize that when we say no to Jesus, we're saying no to his grace. We're saying no to his love. We're saying no to all those gifts that he wants to give us at that moment. And so that's a good challenge for us, and it keeps us focused on the positive, not on the things that we get denied, right? We feel like it's the thou shalt nots, and the church is always telling us what not to do. But we have to do is focus on the good that we receive when we're always in the presence of God. One of the things my experience has always been is that if I do God's will, I never have regrets. I have never, not once in my lifetime, have ever regretted doing God's will. But I can tell you one thing. If I just do my will, and I consistently do my own will, I will have regrets. And that's a guarantee. At least that's for me. I know that all the time. I do my will. Eventually, may not every, maybe every time, but eventually I will have a regret because I don't understand everything. I don't understand what everybody else is going through. So that's why I'm always trying to do God's will. And that's all part of being watchful and alert. Now, being watchful and alert requires a decision to be alert. If a guard is guarding a fort or a house, they don't just mindlessly guard the house. They don't just like walk around, oh, what's in the fridge? Oh, huh, leftover pizza, I'll take some of that. Uh, and they don't even look outside, no security guards. They don't have a badge or anything or says that I'm a security person. They don't have anything to help protect the place. They're just mindlessly walking around. When does a guard do that? Like if you're guarding your soul, there has to be a will decision to say, you know, I need to do that. And you're guarding that, right? And it's exhausting. It takes a lot of energy to do it, and good Lord knows it. That's where we need to rely on God's grace to give us that energy that we need. That's that life of prayer. That's coming to Mass. So coming to Mass isn't about, you know, just serving your duty, serving your time. It's about entering into this relationship with God, and in this relationship, you get rejuvenated. You get the graces that you need so that you can keep carrying on and being vigilant and being the person that you really want to be. Be that person of grace and holiness and virtue that other people can really look up to. That you can never, you would never have to hang your head low. And so we always look at the goodness of God and the goodness of following Him and the benefits that we receive in always, always remaining vigilant, always watching.